is uh, this is this is the one that uh, this kind of style is what reminds me again of uh, another European photographer, Nigel Danson, just because of the interesting composition. Like you have the hills or the mountains off in the back, then you have an interesting element up front here. In this case, it's snow covered rocks and the piece of ice. And uh, yeah, and there's a, I love to hear about this. Okay, so this one uh, was shot in the Rockies and I was actually, I was with a friend and we were driving around and we noticed that there was some really nice light in the sky. And so we were like, ooh, look at the light. What are we gonna shoot? What do we wanna put in front of that? Um, and we had no idea. So we headed to this area because we know that um, quite often the snow stays on the trees in this spot. It doesn't tend to come off. I think maybe there's less wind or there's something about this particular area where the, the snow stays on the trees. Um, so we were uh, on Highway 1 and we pulled into a pullout and we were just going to shoot with a longer lens and photograph the trees. And then I looked over the edge and noticed that there was some lovely ice um, around the rock so without really thinking about it I kind of stepped off the edge and then it was really deep it was kind of you know in parts up to like the tops of my hips kind of thing and I was like oh <laughs> this is deep <laughs> so focused on you know the light was nice and I wanted to get down to those rocks so I, I went down there and just uh, got in the water and, uh, and shot that again with tripod low uh, focus stack just to make sure the foreground ice was sharp as well as um, the background. And then just had to think about how I was going to get out of there once I was done. <laughs> I was just like, get down there, get it, get in there. Get the shot and consequences later, whatever. That's right. Yeah. My, my friend didn't come down actually. She stayed up the top. She had to pull me up the last little bit to, to get out of there. But yeah, Highway One is running just to the top, just, you know, just above that snow on the right hand side. It's right there. So it's just off okay. the highway. Uh, you were in, uh, you said it was like waist deep. When you go into the water, because I've seen some of your other images too, where you're in, like in the water, in the water with your tripod and everything. Uh, are you using like hip waders or do you just lots of changes of clothes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't normally go that deep, <laughs> quite honestly. I have, I've worn hip waders a couple of times, um, but for the most part, I'm, I'm not normally in very deep water, but I use um, those, um, I use the, the boots I use are dry shod. I'm not sure whether you want me to mention any names of. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Whatever's um, going to be helpful to the audience for sure. Yeah. yeah. So dry shod because they are, they're really warm, but they're also waterproof up to the, you know, they come up to the knee. Um, mm. So they, they act like snow boots, but they're, you know, better than snow boots for me and that I can actually be warm, but then also step into a lake or something and have dry feet. So yeah, they're, they're really good for that. I, I really like them. And uh, on, on this image as well, um, you do a lot of running water shots uh, that look like a daytime long exposure. So mm -hmm. what you, like you are you using, what kind of filters you're using for that? And the kind of, how do you, yeah, how, how do you operate? Get, how do you, how do you achieve your long exposures here with the running water to get that all smoothed out? Yeah. So sometimes um, because the, the ISO will go lower than a hundred on like my Z7 and Z62, I can go down to, I think it's equivalent to like, ISO 31 or something. Um, sometimes I can just do it using the camera um, and just taking my ISO down and, and playing with my settings, obviously depending on how dark or light it is. Um, but obviously other times I need to add a filter because it's too bright to be able to do that. Um, so I, um, I'm using case filters, which I really like because they're super easy to use. Um, they're magnetic, so I can literally just slap them on the front really quickly if I, um, you know, if I come across something that I want to shoot. Um, I, I, my probably my go-to filter is my six stop. If you, you know, that's the one that I started with. If I was only going to have one, I'd probably have a six stop. And then since um, having that one, I've added a three stop and a ten stop that I like to use um, to, for you know different weather conditions. Sometimes. At sunset, for example, you know, a three stop as the light's beginning to drop will just slow down the shutter speed just enough and not too much. So, you know, different time at different times, I use different uh, neutral density filters. Uh -huh. 